Intel's next GPU is supposed to compete with the big boys. Somebody made Grand Theft Auto 5 to work on a neural network, and we might be getting some AMD phones this coming July. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet. Let's talk first about the big story, which is Intel's DG2 GPU. There's some more information coming out surrounding a previously unknown version of this upcoming card that we're expecting from Intel at some point in the near future. The top spec card that we've been expecting has 512 execution units, and the lower end card's supposed to be around 384 execution units, but now we have leaked documents of a 448 execution unit GPU as well as some rough benchmarks. We don't know what games these are in, but this is from a well-known leaker with him showing that the 448 EU GPU from Intel is roughly 92% of a 6700 XT and slightly below an RTX 3070. The lowest end version of the next gen GPU, the 128 execution unit DG2, is supposed to beat out the GTX 1650, which falls to the Intel GPU by 12%. This would mean we'd have a decent competitor for AMD and Nvidia's lineups and the top end 512 execution unit card should be out in RTX 3070 Ti and fall just below in RTX 3080. Now all of this again is speculative. We're getting more and more details as the days pass, but the DG2 GPU does seem to be turning out to be something exciting. Obviously we we're waiting on pricing and availability, but it could be something that actually makes the GPU market really, really good if Intel can produce more cards than Nvidia and AMD have managed up to at this point. Are you excited for Intel's DG2? Let me know down below in the comments, but I can tell you that I'm excited for today's episode sponsor, Filti. Filti is a Kansas-based startup that makes reusable nanofiber material that can be easily converted into face masks. However, we're gonna be talking about the washable MERV13 filter that you can use in your furnace in order to make sure that your air is purified whenever you're turning on your HVAC system in your house. This thing's been great in my furnace system ever since I've installed it because it uses Filti's patent pending nanofiber technology and it's probably 100% made in the United States and it maintains its efficiency levels over eight washes, which is a pretty big deal because in one year in the United States alone, there are enough disposable filters that get tossed out yearly to wrap around the earth 157 times. On average, a Filti washable filter will save you $100 a year opposed to having to buy a disposable filter every three months. And Filti's washable filter is good for a two full years. Now don't be like me, like the person who neglects to replace his HVAC filter at all and just set a timer to wash it every few months and then it's good for the full two years, making sure that you're not number one, creating excess waste, but number two, you're getting that really good air filtration that you need for your home. So check out Filti and their washable filter at the link in the video description. Big thanks again to them for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. And while I'm happy about today's episode sponsor, I'm also happy about my work because I have to be, at least if I wanna work at Canon in China because they have installed smile cameras that use AI cameras to determine whether or not you're happy enough to enter the building. This is great, I love it. Catlin, you better be smiling or you're not happy enough to edit this video. This is something that Canon actually announced last year, but now they're actually implementing in their Canon Information Technologies office in China where they have to smile before they're allowed in the door. I don't know how to say how ridiculous this is. Did a loved one just pass away? Too bad, you gotta put that smile on your face before you're allowed in Canon's doors. Get into a car accident on the way of work? You should have learned to drive better. Feel like your life is meaningless because you're working at a company that forces you to smile before you can actually enter the building? Suck it up, buttercup, this is the 21st century. In case you live in the 21st century in Texas, you might be experiencing your uh, local power utility remotely adjusting your thermostat in case you have one of those smart control thermostats like a Nest device. This is because you opted into the program. This is something that people are kind of freaking out about on social media where it's like, oh, Texas is running out of power. And so they're hacking into everybody's Nest to turn down the thermostat, except for based on everything that I read about this subject, this is only an opt in system where they gave you like a $30 bill credit, but you knew that they could do this for you. And the change is simply manually adjusting your thermostat 
afterwards. Like it's not something that permanently sticks and you still get the reduced credit even if you change what their standards are. It's just their way of trying to control the grid remotely after you gave them permission to. If you don't want your utility to have access to your smart home device, don't give it to them and then they wouldn't have it. At least in this instance, that's what's going on here. I can see why this would like enrage people where it's like, ah, the Texas government invading on people's rights. It's nonsense, but you, you gave them the right to do this with the contract that you signed so that you could save some cash, okay? Hashtag capitalism. But you're not gonna be saving cash with PayPal because they are raising their transaction fees. They used to charge 2.9% plus a 30 cent fee for transactions, but now they have a brand new fee schedule that will be as much as 3.49% plus a roughly 50 cents per transaction fee. We'll leave a link in the video description in case you're a merchant who happens to use PayPal at all, and this might affect your bottom line. YouTube's bottom line not being affected because now they're gonna be rolling out picture in picture to all iOS devices as well as iPad OS. This is something that you could only get if you had YouTube Premium, but now they're rolling it out to all devices, probably because Apple strong-armed them into that. But you can be strong-armed into turning off one of your neighbor's iPhone if you decide to change your SSID of a Wi-Fi network to percentage P, percentage S, percentage S, percentage S, percentage S, percentage N, and then if somebody automatically logs onto that because you don't put a password on it and they have auto connect to open Wi-Fi networks, then it, it loses its Wi-Fi functionality and then it kills it. But, and it doesn't reset it after you reset the device. You have to actually go in and reset network settings in order to get it to work. Vulnerabilities on iPhone, beautiful stuff. You love to see it. And you also love to see toasters from Destiny because Bungie now officially selling its Destiny toaster, which I know sounds absurd, but this is because they raised over $800,000 for a pediatric treatment center. And the target goal of $777,000 was when Bungie said that they would release this toaster, which they are now doing. You can pick it up for $85, which is obviously expensive, but considering the fact that this came out of a charity event, I'm all for it. And it toasts your bread like this, which seems really inefficient for actually eating the thing, but really cool for, I guess, just, you know, awesome just having it. it and 10% of the profits are still gonna be going to St. Jude's Research Hospital, which is great stuff. So it's crazy, but it's not too bad. Which is the perfect segue into crypto stocks, Bitcoin up 0.01%. It had a rough Sunday, folks, dipping down to $33,500, now up nearly $2,000 after that, but that's still 0.01% on the day. Ethereum up 3.1%, also going under that severe dip, and Dogecoin down 2.5%, having that dip as well, but not able to recover as well, sitting right around 27 cents. GameStop had a rough Friday down 4% to $213, AMC down 2.4% to $59.26, and BlackBerry down 4.5% to $12.90. It seems like the markets are taking a hit overall. And Crucial wants to not take a hit on warranties when it comes to Chia mining on, or Chia plotting rather, on their SSDs. So they put out a blog post which essentially said that any use of crypto mining or plotting or using this for Chia at all voids your warranty. No exceptions, okay? It's just, it's not going to happen. Usage outside of normal intended use shall include but not be limited to mining a cryptocurrency, data mining, mining farms. It, the warranty won't cover that, which would be different than the previous warranty, which said that uh, it's three to five years or maximum terabytes written. If it happens to pass away before those, then obviously you would have it covered under warranty. This would indicate that they're retroactively changing their warranty. But then when people called them out on that, Crucial took it down and then defected to the current warranty setup, which is, hey, uh, we base it on terabytes written or years, not what did you use it for? And NASA's using the Hubble telescope to take pictures for way too long, okay? It's been up as long as I've been alive and I'm, I'm, I turned old last yesterday. I can't even remember words and how things are going. Hubble telescope has a system that has glitched. It broke down on June 13th with a computer on the inside that they haven't had success rebooting or getting to turn back on. So they're still gonna work on this. This is not the first time that the Hubble telescope has had issues that they've had to try to uh, engineer remotely but considering it's been up there for far too long and the James Webb telescope is far too delayed, I am not necessarily surprised that it's starting to wear out just like I am. And we haven't even begun to wear in the age of AI because now we're getting video games that are fully rendered 
in a neural network, not in an engine whatsoever. A YouTuber published his Gan Theft Auto, which was Grand Theft Auto 5, being run in a generative adversarial network, where an AI essentially got the input of Grand Theft Auto 5 over multiple iterations, and then was able to figure out how the game should legitimately play, and then they upsampled it to actually make it look somewhat reasonable. And you can see that it actually plays somewhat reasonably, and it's not being run in the GTA 5 engine, it's actually being run in the neural network, which is just absolutely absurd. NVIDIA gave him the hardware to be able to do it. I highly recommend that you go check out this video, get the deep dive explanation on how they pulled it off, and they also have a GitHub repository in case you wanna try out the training data for yourself. And in case you wanna try out AMD's upcoming Samsung smartphone, we might not have to wait too long. Apparently, we're supposed to be getting the announcement this month in June. However, that has been delayed until July for us to get the Exynos chip that's gonna have AMD's GPU set on it to get the fastest gaming known on a smartphone with ray tracing. Are you ready for it? You better be. It's coming fast, it's coming hard, and it's just, not what I should have been saying right there. But I should be saying that GPU prices might be getting back to normal. You should check out Friday's episode of Hot News right over there so that you can catch up on the GPU pricing news. And with that being said, I'll see you tomorrow, my friends, for another round of Hot News. Cheers.